Good morning, everyone. My name is Devin Martin. I'm an elite applications engineer with Trimec. Uh, every week, we have exclusive video tech tips that are sent out to our subscribers for free via email, uh, where we give quick uh, tips, tricks, and all things SolidWorks and 3D printing. Well, this month, instead of emailing those out, uh, we've decided to bring them to you live during our Trimec Tech Talk 2021 webinar series, where we cover what's new in SolidWorks 2021. So our month-long webinar series uh, of Trimec Tech Talks have covered everything from SolidWorks 2021 to 3D experience and uh, in-depth breakdowns on how to utilize these tools more efficiently. So this, last, this is the last week of our Trimec Tech Talk webinar series. So uh, just so you guys know, be sure to sign up for a few webinars, uh, starting with the SolidWorks CAM uh, at two o'clock today, uh, and then followed by drawings and some assemblies webinars Thursday and Friday. There's gonna be a lot of great stuff, some tips and tricks, so make sure you register so you can catch all those uh, great tips coming up. Well, today I'm live and here to talk about SolidWorks Pack and Go. Uh, if you don't know, SolidWorks Pack and Go is an easy to use tool built into SolidWorks that makes it really quick to uh, send assemblies to customers, vendors, uh, even our awesome tech support team. Uh, and you know, maybe you need to send something in to let them help you out with some of your files. So in order for a SolidWorks assembly to effectively be opened and used, it has to have access to all of the referenced components. Uh, SolidWorks Pack and Go automatically will find and package these referenced assembly files and organize them into a folder, making it really quick and easy to use, uh, and also making sure nothing's missing uh, when it's opened by a customer or a vendor. So SolidWorks Pack and Go, it's found in the file at Pack and Go. Uh, so if we just drop down File and we can take a look at Pack and Go right over here. Now, opening up Pack and Go here, we can see that we have this nice uh, interface and basically you might instantly notice that all of the components that are captured or that are in this assembly are actually displayed underneath it. So this Pack and Go has grabbed all of my files and shown them right here. Now, from here, I have a, a quick option to either save it to a folder or actually save it to a zip file, which will make it really easy to email out later. Now, there's a few options in SolidWorks Pack and Go that I'd love to go through with you guys. Uh, the first one is right up top, and this is the ability to include drawings. So my assembly here does have some drawings uh, attached to it, one, one in, in particular. So if I choose to include those drawings, what you'll notice is it does actually add that drawing to the pack and go. So now not only will my customers or vendors uh, have access to the parts, but it also packs up any associated drawings with those components as well. Now, there's a few other options. You can include toolbox components. Now this is really helpful if you're using toolbox, uh, but you don't know if the person you're sending this file might you know, have it, they might not. Uh, including these components will make sure that they do have all the necessary components that they need in order to open and effectively use your assembly. You can also include some simulation results if you've run some simulations, even custom decals and appearances. Maybe you've got some really nice uh, appearances on your part with some, some custom stickers for your company logo. Uh, you can add all of those in and they'll automatically be packed up and zipped up for you. Now, one other really neat thing that you can do with SolidWorks Pack and Go is you have access to really quickly and easily add prefixes and suffixes to all of the components. So this is helpful in the, the sense that if you want to send it out, you could say uh, this is uh, underscore shared and we can add that as a prefix. So now we'll see, let's actually do shared underscore here. So now you can see that this has been prefixed with the shared in the new file name. And then you can see the original was connecting rod assembly. So now we have our shared connecting rod assembly here. So this is really nice. Uh, we can do the same thing with a suffix as well. 
uh, we could say like v1. I like to add underscores in there so you can see a little space, but now we've got our v1 as a suffix. Helpful when sending out, but I find this is also really helpful. Um, maybe you're you're creating a uh, a new assembly or or something, and you've got one that's similar that you know maybe you want to try to make a copy of it. So you can add these prefixes and suffixes and really enable make sure that you're not duplicating files. Uh, that's one thing that uh, can really get you in some trouble. Uh, a lot of duplicate files. We don't want that. So. SOLIDWORKS Pack and Go is, it can be a useful tool for bulk rename as well. So we can choose to add, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually add in a suffix here. Um, and we'll say, we'll say that's shared. That's gonna update my file names. And I can even choose to email after packaging and this will open up my email and include the zip file automatically for me. Now the last thing to really do with SOLIDWORKS Pack and Go is to just choose where we want to save this file. So I could save it to somewhere to my desktop, I could save it uh, on my computer anywhere, I could even toss it into my downloads. But once we have that save location, then all we need to do is go ahead and hit save and we can save it to that location. It's gonna add those files in and what we've done is we've successfully created a SOLIDWORKS pack and go uh, with all of the referenced files needed to send this out and open the assembly independently uh, from your machine itself. All right, everybody. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, on Friday at 11 a.m., you guys will see me again right here with more live videos uh, on SOLIDWORKS Sweep, where I've actually got something really cool. We're gonna walk through making a quick and easy to make living spring by controlling curve using sweep. So uh, if you're interested in, in using the sweep tool to make uh, springs, but not only just make a spring, but actually make it living and adjusting in an assembly, it's gonna be an awesome tech tip that you won't wanna miss. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join me today. Uh, I hope that these quick tips have been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them even after the live has ended. And thank you.